Welcome back to the shop, everybody. We're getting ready to start our next spray welding job on this guy right here, all right? We've got a bad bearing fit on here that we need to repair. So let me tell you about this job and uh, you know who it come from. So one of my viewers, his name is Travis, and he is a maintenance manager at a, a large scale company here in the US. And what, what the company does where he works is that they produce oils from edibles, uh, let's just say nut oils. Nut and vegetable oils is what they produce there. And uh, at the time that he uh, sent this part to me, he says they're currently running almonds. So they're extracting almond oil from the, from the almonds. So this part itself comes out of a decanter centrifuge. And he says what that machine does is it takes the edible oils, it removes the edible oils from the solids from 40% uh, solids down to 2%. And he says it does run at 5,400 RPM and it actually produces 15 gallons of oil per minute. All right. But they're running this and they discovered they had a bad bearing fit right here. And you can see just how bad this guy was worn. So they pulled this out. They had a spare part, luckily, that they put in place. And Travis messaged me and said, hey, we saw that last spray welding video you did on that blower shaft. And we have a part very similar to that that needs to repair and want to know, would you be interested in helping us out? And I was like, yeah, man, I mean, that's, that's a perfect job for my eutectic right there. So he sent it on down to me. I'm going to help them out. We're going to get this fixed so they can have this part ready on the shelf in case they need it to keep that machine running. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead. We got this cut line in there where somebody had already cut a bearing race off of that. That's a common, uh, thing that people do split the race and get it off there so we'll go over to the tig welder and go ahead and fill this little groove in right there we won't have to grind it down or anything from there we'll just go over to the lathe we're going to use our monarch lathe chuck it in the four jaw get it indicated and we'll go ahead and do our undercut our build up and then finish it to size all right so this is the actual uh, bearing for the unit right now it's a uh, fag bearing nu 1014 that's the bearing right there keeping it nice and wrapped up, which is what you should always do until you're ready to install the bearing. I just unwrapped it just so I could get my measurements. So I got my measurements right here. This is what the, the ID is measuring, which is a 70 millimeter, okay? And then this is gonna be my shaft tolerance whenever we turn this journal, your uh, maximum and minimum size. And then right now, the shaft itself is measuring 2.743. So you can see we've got approximately 13 thousandths wear in this journal right now of where that where that guy's at so it's been worn for a, a while and i'm sure this thing did not make some pretty noises when it was running the uh, powder that i'm going to be using is this uh, 21022 eutectic and i'll show you i don't normally show you the info on the powders but if we go in here to the book uh, so 21022 is uh, very similar to 21021 and I'll tell you what it says, self-bonding, medium-hard nickel powder with excellent resistant, resistance to adhesive wear. So the one we're going to be using, 21022, modified version of 21021, additions of chromium, boron, and silicon increase the machinability and service temp. All right, that's one of the reasons why I like the 21022, which is what we're going to use. Uh, to me, it has a little bit better uh, machinability than the one series above that but it is a nickel based powder and it it, crea it creates a very good surface for a captured bearing so you know this bearing right here how you install this is that you're going to warm it up on a bearing heater and then you drop it in place and it shrinks and it keeps that that buildup captured in there okay also excellent for seal surfaces this journal right here is actually a seal journal you can see that black line around that now it's not a groove it's just this discoloration from the uh, oil seal rubbing on that but in the case that this was worn down that's another good uh, candidate for the uh, spray welding is to uh, build it up right here turn it back to size and remove any wear that would be in a sealed journal all right so i think we uh, are ready to move let's go on over to the welding department and we'll get the uh, little groove tig welded up and then we'll move on to the lathe
Looks like we got success. There's a little closer shot of our uh, TIG weld that we did right there. I came back in right at the very end of it right there because I didn't have quite all the groove filled in and I just touched it up right there. You got the four jaw preset for the uh, 220 millimeter flange. The back side is machined even though there's still a little bit of paint on that, but that's okay because we're gonna we're just gonna make sure it's indicated nice and uh, nice and square. push back against the uh, machine face you know we'll uh, we'll indicate it in two spots to make sure it's it's running nice and straight we'll start back here on the uh, seal journal see where we're at Get 50 thou off all right so well, I went the wrong way Okay, we're within one right there. I'm going to go ahead and get this side is running close as I can. And then we'll go ahead and move it. And I'm trying not to over tighten these jaws. You want them tight, but you don't want them dogged in there super tight because you want to be able to bump it if you need to. All right, so there's a near zero run out there so we'll come out here to this one of these areas here this one looks pretty good and what we want to do we'll just move the carriage down no nope, still got to go in with it okay so there you can see that we're not running straight so we're only indicated in one area but it's doing this in the in the jaws there so what we can do let me grab my one of my uh, lead hammers right here and usually what I start with is when there's a flange like this just make sure that we bump back on the high actually I'm sorry the low and see if we're not all the way back see that so we're off uh, two thousandths right there on this jaw You may not be able to get it all this way, but we'll try. So it's pretty well on the on the jaw there now. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll go back down here to this end and let's uh, recheck it here. So you can see we're running low right there. So we're still crooked. So what we're trying to do, we're just trying to get the crook out of the out of the part. And I've shown this many times. You just go back and forth. And this is why I was saying it's important not to over tighten the jaws because you want that part to be able to move just slightly when you bump it with the soft blow. So you can get it twisted around straight where you want it. We'll come back out here. All right, so we've got one thousandths low right there. We'll try it again here. We're still a thousandths off. About a half a thousandths right there. That's not too bad. All right, I'm going to keep chasing it like I'm doing back and forth, back and forth. And I'm bringing you guys back once we get this thing running zero. We got our part running within a half a thousandths on both areas that I uh, bumped in right there. So we're ready to go. First thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and knock the high spots down of our weld right there. And we're just gonna make one little cut across there, okay? I'm just coming in close to that high spot and then we'll turn it on. And we'll just come in here and touch off. That way I know I'm there. We're gonna come back in here with our, uh, our threading tool and do an undercut there. I just wanna knock the high spots down on that on that weld bead. 
I think that's going to be about it right there. That should be about all we need. Yeah, so that'll work right there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and mask it off next. We'll put our mask on both sides here to protect our other journals there from our uh, buildup. We'll do that and then we'll start our undercut. Go ahead and start our masking. I usually just try to get a little bit of this off the cap when you take the cap off. I want to make sure I get down in these grooves here. Make sure that powder don't stick down inside there. This area. Get it good. Get our seal journal. That's it. I'm just going to let her dry. Here's a little trick I always do to help speed up the drying process. So because I've got to get up to this, uh, we're going to get up to the shoulder right here that's got a radius in it. We're going to be using the uh, Tetra Mini Cut Threading Tool to actually do our undercut. It always works fine. Uh, threading Tool works fine for undercuts. So let's go ahead and get started on that. a good touch off so I'm going to zero my dial right there on the cross slide here. Now let's uh, let's go in 10 right there. I'm not quite clean enough to where yet, but we're just getting a, a baseline established of where we want to be. Alright, go back to our start, take a look at that, and you can still see the wear in there, you can see our weld, let's go this way. Weld looks good, alright, so let's take another ten thousandths on our undercut here, going back to my start. All right, we'll go with another 10. That's 20,000 total in feed. Doesn't look like we're still quite cleaned up yet, so we'll probably take another cut. You gotta remember, we're already 13,000 undersized, so you just wanna take the bare minimum needed to do the repair. Almost, you can see, the, see all the low spots in there? So let's take another 10. All the way up to the shoulder where it just touches and go in another 10,000. So that's on little little bearing journals like this that have this kind of wear. That's usually what I'll do about 10,000 to pass until it uh, cleans up good. All right, now we've got it undercut. So we're a total of 35,000 10 feet on the dial. And then keep in mind the, the wear that was already in it. So we're approximately 50,000 small on the, the journal finish diameter. Okay, so you can see the uh, the TIG weld that I, that I built up in there and you know most of that got cut off and you can see there's a little channel in there that, that remained uh, filled after we welded it and turned it. Alright, so we're going to cut, I just got it set on 24 threads per inch, alright. Come back in here, I got my zero set. Twenty thousand on the dial. It sounds like I got my tool bit right there. It sounds like it snapped it, and I believe it did. It didn't like that start, not having a uh, you know an undercut there. So looks like I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to swap this uh, tool around because I need to finish that. But that's the great thing about an insert. You can just swap the, the tip around to the next side 
and you'll line up exactly where you were. So we'll do that. I'll bring you right back. All right, let's try it again and see if we can get it done this time. I know what happened there. It was whenever I engaged the uh, half nut lever that it, uh, it moved on me. I gotta see if I can drop this in without moving the carriage. Across there. All right, that should be sufficient right there. I'll take a clean file and um, lay it in there and file those little burrs off there, and uh, we'll be ready to start spraying it. All right, guys, it's time to start getting this thing sprayed. Shouldn't take very long. This is a pretty small buildup. Uh, we'll start with our preheat. We got to get it preheated to at least 200 degrees and I'm going to do a base coat and then make an adjustment on my transport valve and then we'll do our final buildup coat. Okay. Make a little pop right when we light off right here. out there. Okay, we're good. So I always build up to at least 50 thousandths over your finished size. So right there I'm measuring two inches, 805 right there. And I usually go, try to measure it in three places, on both ends and in the middle, and make sure that you have a uniform build up there. So now we're gonna just set up the fan, turn it on and let it cool before we get to our machine. I just take this fan right here, point it right towards the part and the chuck and everything and turn it on high and spin it until it cools it down. Our part's nice and cool. It's completely cooled down. I usually turn the fan on and I walk away, go eat lunch or just, you know, come back an hour later or so and it's fully cooled down. This is tubular, by the way, so our hole goes all the way through. So we're just going to go ahead and do a little light cleaning on it before I start the, uh, the turning. And I just take a wire brush and just kind of just do like this. It'll get a lot of that off. 
and then we'll finish polishing it after we uh, get it turned. Let's get started turning. So I was going to point out the uh, the insert I'm using is a uh, it's a Seco brand, but the grade is TH1000. It's these guys right here. I find that this uh, this grade right here, this TH1000, actually works really good for uh, hardened steels or hard hard steels, hard surfaces, including this uh, this this buildup right there. So a really good quality insert that I that I use for harder materials. So you see that ridge? It may be hard to see on that. You, the very outer edge is a little bit larger than the rest of the uh, buildup. So I want to kind of remove that just like that right there. So I want to come in here and just kind of touch off in a random spot. You want to touch off on your highest, which is right about there. And we'll just take light cuts, man. Just uh, we're gonna go ten thousandths at a time and see how it cleans up. So we're a little bit heavier on that left end there. Another reason to start off kind of light on your cut. I'm just hand feeding that. Just let it break out. And there's the end. All right, so it's looking pretty good. We use my two to three mic here and just see where we're at. So I keep a a note here hanging on the lathe that's got my plus and minus, so that I can always reference it quickly and uh, you know keep up with my coordinates of where I'm at. So right there, we're measuring. 79, 779. I still got 15 thousandths to, to our finished size, so I'm taking 5 thousandths passes now. I'm gonna go ahead and do another five. And we're gonna sneak up on it, so it should be a split between three cuts at 5 thousandths a pass. do is just make sure there's no dust on it. I just wipe the top and bottom of my finger lightly. Come in here and give it a mic. All right. So we've got nine thousandths to go. We're going to go ahead and get this finished out. give it a mic and this will be our finished cut right here. I want to leave just enough that I can polish this and bring it down to our maximum size. I like to shoot for the maximum tolerance because that gives you a little tolerance there to fall down into in case you shoot and it's a little undersized. So I got three thousandths. We're gonna make a three thousandths pass now.
right, that was my finished cut. I was shooting for a half a thousandth oversize. Let's see where I ended up. I'm gonna be using my tenth readings on this. I'm gonna use the ratcheting thimble there. And let's see where I'm at. So 50, so seven. Remember my max size is 756.9. So we're at 757 and one tenth. So I'm actually two tenths over my maximum size there. But we can go down as low as uh, 756.4. So all, all it's going to take is a quick little polish on that. And we're going to be right on the maximum right there. So what I want to do is finish getting the, uh, the material out of this groove right there. And it'll just flake out. I just put a little grooving tool and it'll just knock that right out of there. And then we got a chance for that corner there as well. All right, how about we get this finished up? I'll go ahead and do a little polishing. Let's get rid of the rest of the uh, dust that's on there. All right, using 220 grit. Doesn't need much. I'm just going to do a little bit just like this. Let's see what we took it down. So we took it down one tenth. I still have one more tenth to go. Even if we took it down a couple more tenths, it's, it's going to be just fine, fall well within that tolerance of our high low. That also helps brighten it up just like you see there. Make a nice pretty finish on it. And if we're there, let's see. Yes, all right, so we're at 757. 757 and 8 tenths is where we're at. So I dropped it 3 tenths, hitting it just like we did there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish out this masking. That's what we're doing right there. I just got to put a little bit extra pressure on it to get it to cut. And then we need to get the seal journal up here. So I need a thinner strip for that. Take another piece of this and rip it. But at the same time, I'm going to take that seal journal and just kind of polish it the same way and get rid of that black line from the oil seal. This little area up here needs to be polished up. I'm not sure what this is right here. Something's actually rubbed on it and galled it, but this is actually an undercut. It's smaller there, so I don't think this, I don't know what purpose this area of it serves unsure but we are just about there I need to clean that surface up right there that flat take and fold a piece of uh, coarse emery and just hold it in there in those grooves like that and it polishes those grooves out still got a little little trace of masking in there it's not gonna hurt anything just like that right there you can also come into these corner radiuses like this over here just kind of give a nice little polish on that just like so well guys we're all finished up with this part right here the only thing left to do is to get it wrapped up boxed up and get it sent back out there to Travis for his uh, decanter centrifuge. This would be a good spare part that he can keep on the shelf and have it ready to go in case the unit that they get in there, you know, if, if it fails, he'll have a good part that he can put it right back in there. All right, so our uh, Eutectic Teradyne did an excellent job on this. This is the actual 
This is the first job that I have done using the new Teradyne 2000 equipment, and it did a good job. I'm really glad that I got it sent up there to Eutectic. They repaired it and, uh, and got it sent back down in such a, a quick fashion for me to get this job done right here. This is a really good process for parts like this or, you know, shafts that you don't want to, you don't want to go over there and start arc welding on, on shafts. It causes it to warp and bend. That's the benefit of using the, um, the eutectic powder in the, you know, the, the thermal flame spray process. It minimizes the, the heat that you're putting in there. When you compare it to arc welding, you're putting a lot of intense heat on a part and you're going to call that, cause it to warp or draw one way. The, uh, the flame spray is considered cold process because of the heat that goes into it. You want to keep it below 600 degrees. Your part is spinning and you apply even heat to it in a nice even buildup on there and then let it cool. So you have no warping issues like you have to deal with whenever you use an arc welding. Now that's not to say it's for every application. You have some shafts, some, some industrial parts that have an extreme amount of wear and you have no choice but to get the arc welder over there and start welding it up. But for jobs like I showed you here, that Eutectic is an excellent process to do quick repairs on stuff like this. So. This guy is ready to go. I was gonna show you, this is, the, this is the bearing that goes in there and what it looks like, you know, cylindrical roller bearing. So you got your inner race, it slides right out of the bearing there. So this would be, you put this on a bearing heater and it'll grow just slightly enough that it, you can take that thing and just drop it right in place. And as soon as it goes on there, it instantly starts shrinking and it'll be captured on that, on that journal there, all right? get that wrapped back up i don't want to get it dirty and then i was going to show you this so this is our final dimension of what i hit there's our maximum and our minimum and then what i measured after i got through with all the polishing right there so 2.7568 so we're four tenths over the uh, the minimum of what it should be so we're well within the tolerance of of where it needs to be okay so that's it I hope you enjoyed watching. I enjoyed sharing it with you, and we'll see you on the next job.